Hi there, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke, and today we're going to look at programming the M5 Atom in UI Flow. Now it's early days for the M5 Atom support in UI Flow, so don't expect all of the features to be implemented just yet. Currently, offline programming is only available for Windows. Let's first get started by installing the 1.4.5 firmware from the firmware burner in UIFlow desktop version. A cool new feature of the Windows offline version is that now we can enter the access point and password of our Wi-Fi network before we flash the device. Once we flash the firmware, you'll notice that the M5 Atoms LED matrix is flashing red. This means it's attempting to connect to your network. Of course, we'll need our API key in order to program online. Before we do that, let's see how we can program it in USB mode in the Windows offline version. Changing modes on the M5 Atom can seem tricky at first, but after a while you'll get used to it. To change to USB mode, we first press the reset button and then immediately hold down the face button. After a second or two, it will pulse different colors every second. This is the M5 Atom cycling through modes. To switch to USB mode, we simply lift our finger when the matrix flashes blue. For an explanation of what each of the colors mean, you can check the quick start guide in the docs page, which you'll find the link to in the description. Now make sure that you select the M5 Atom device in the settings menu and then click connect and your device should successfully connect. In the UI manager on the left hand side we can click on the squares of the M5 Atom to set the individual LEDs of the matrix on or off. We can also use the color swatch to change the color. Get creative in designing some cool images on the M5 Atom matrix. The RGB section has some various blocks for controlling the whole of the matrix at once or individual LEDs. We also have the IMU blocks which allow us to get readings from the internal accelerometer of the M5 Atom. But without a screen, how are we going to display these values? There are two options. For offline, we can use the print block in the text blocks to print the value to the serial console. If you're unfamiliar with the serial console, you can check our other videos on this subject. The other option would be to use the MQTT blocks to send the data to an MQTT platform. But for that, we'll first need to connect to the internet. Press the reset button and hold in the M5 Atom face button and wait till the screen flashes yellow. Quickly release your finger to enter Wi-Fi pairing mode. Now we'll be able to see the M5 Atom device in our Wi-Fi settings. Once connected, open up a browser and go to 192.168.4.1. The M5 Atom Wi-Fi setting page will now load. At the top of the page here, we can see our API key. Make sure to copy this as we're going to need it in just a moment. Select your Wi-Fi access point and enter your password, then click connect. In a short while, the device should connect. Now open your browser to flow.m5stack.com. Open the settings panel, insert your API key, and then select M5 Atom from the device list. Before we get started coding with the MQTT blocks, we're going to need to set up an Adafruit.io account as that's the MQTT platform I'm going to be using in this video. Bear in mind that a free account has a limit to how much data we can send, so we'll have to consider that in our program later. Once you've created your account, create a new dashboard. You can create a new block to visualize the data if you need. Then we'll also need to create a new feed. The feed is what receives the data when the M5 Atom publishes it. Now let's set up the MQTT program in UIFlow. First we'll need the connect block from the network settings. 
then you'll need to enter your network name and password in here. Next we drag out the main MQTT block. The MQTT block requires various information from the Adafruit platform. First we can create a name for the client ID and then we need to set the website to io.adafruit.com. We can leave the port as it is. Next you'll need to copy your username an active key from the Adafruit platform. Now we'll drag in an MQTT start block and then create our main loop. We'll need to create a variable to hold the IMU data. Once we've assigned the IMU value to the variable, we'll add a publish block. The variable goes into the message section of the publish block. For the topic section, we first need to add a string field and then go to our Adafruit I.O. account, click on the Feeds tab, then copy the part of the URL that has our username and everything following it. Now we can paste that into the topic section. As I mentioned earlier, Adafruit free accounts have a limit to how much data we can send during a set time limit. So we'll need to add a wait block and then tweak it depending on what level of account you have. Lastly, we'll add an MQTT subscribe block, duplicate the feed URL and paste it into the subscribe block. Now we add a set variable block, find the get topic data block from the MQTT blocks and assign it to the variable. Now MQTT programs must be downloaded to the device so we'll go ahead and download that. If we refresh our feed page on Adafruit I.O., we should start to see the IMU values. If you have a free account and you hit the limit rate, you're likely to see some messages like this above. Now if we want to further alter this program or start a new program, we'll have to make sure that we set the Atom back into the internet mode, as we did before. To run any apps downloaded to the device, we simply press the reset button, hold the face button in again, and wait until the RGB matrix turns purple. That's about all for our video today. I hope this is enough to get you started with your M5 Atom. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!